What's up, guys? Welcome. Hold on a second. What's it called again? Let's, let's talk. Let's talk. China. Let's talk. China. Let's talk China. <laughs> the, the Barrett Channel. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Let's Talk China, our first edition. Before we do our live stream, and uh, I've for some reason been given the honor of uh, introducing the series. But how about we start with uh, introducing ourselves because we're kind of uh, uh, new to each other. We're not very familiar with each other. So how about we say a little bit about uh, where we're from and um, maybe uh, Kirk, start with you. Okay. Well, I'm Guilo sixty. Well, actually, I'm Kirk Absalon from Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, northern Saskatchewan. But I live in Nanning City, and uh, I'm here to have fun with everybody else. Cool. And Lee? Okay, so I'm Lee from the Barrett Channel, which is, well, I'm half of the Barrett Channel. My son is the other half. I'm from England in the UK, and I've been living full-time in China for about 10 years, with about sort of two years gap in between. Cool. Yeah. Alex? Um, I'm Alex from Reportify Media, Canadian born and raised, but exiled out of Canada in the uh, mid 90s, uh, moved to Europe and then bounced over to Asia about seven years ago and been focusing a lot on China, been uh, in and out of China now that I've got my 10 year visa and that's going to be my focus for the next five years. And back to you, Daniel. Cool. Well, welcome right. everybody. So, um, I was actually born in the UK, in London, East End, which you probably didn't oh, know. Really? Wow. Yeah, I was in, uh, yeah, cool. I, in uh, a Whitechapel uh, hospital, so technically a cockney. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, uh, but when I was five years old, moved to Canada and um, grew up in Ontario. Now I'm in China for 12 years. I thought actually, uh, uh, Kurt, I thought you were from, from Eastern Canada. I always thought when I was listening to your video, you got. You got a little bit of, I mean, it's it, uh, maybe my. Uh, my everybody says I accent. sound like a yeah. doofy. Hey? I, I, I can feel my Canadian accent getting heavier and heavier as I'm listening to you, too. Lord Thunder and Jesus. Oh, Lord. yeah. Hey? You, you know, yeah. I, you know I, I, I did spend some time in Digby, Nova Scotia. Actually, it was in Cornwallis, but close to Digby in boot camp back in 1970. So, you know what I mean? No, they taught me how to run for 10 miles with 50 pounds on my back and. Oh, life was actually I enjoyed it, but I yeah. the people, the people in Eastern Canada are great. They are, they are. I, um, I had a chef here, uh, actually working for my group up here, um, who was from Newfoundland. He was a Newfie, and he had a really funny story. He said when he first came to China, he was telling his family. His family said, "Oh, so where are you going?" And he says, "I'm going to China." And he, they kept saying, they kept thinking he was saying Toronto because they, <laughs> when they, the way they say China and Toronto is almost the same. So I kept saying, uh, "Where are you going?" I'm going to China. You're going to Toronto. No, I'm going to China. <laughs> and then when they finally got it, when they finally got it, they said, oh, you're off your fucking head, boy. <laughs> yeah, well, it, 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 it could have been Hong Kong. Yeah. That's two syllables, not one. So what do we, what, uh, you, what do you want to talk about? We're, this is going to be random. We didn't plan anything. So I guess it's going to be a little bit. I got a couple sick. questions. Of, yeah, I, get, you. I, I guess it's, we'll call it open mic. And yeah. we all know that, we all know that Guelo 60 just loves you, to talk. He does. Who, do you guys have any is, drinks on is, hand? Yes, yeah, I do. Yeah. I'm drinking, drinking. I'm drinking oh, big bottles of chain beer. Oh, okay. This is a little bit stronger. This is a stout. I'm drinking one of our stouts. I think it's uh, like okay. eight or nine percent alcohol. Oh, uh, see, so I got it. We got to come visit you. I've got the Jack Daniels with a Coke. Yeah. So oh, oh, yeah. A okay. little bit of a little bit of a party going on <laughs> down there in Shenzhen, huh? Alex, <laughs> absolutely. What you, what, Alex, what are you drinking? Ba baby duck. <laughs> yeah, you, no, you, I, I, th I think okay. Let's let's G and T, man. It's a G and T. Let's give Alex a break, and you can go to the to the fridge and go get a beer or something. Uh, you drank. <laughs> you, you forgot you drank them all when you stayed with me. Yeah, but you've had lots of time. We've been gone for like ten days. You have lots of time to go get more. I have. It may be to get it for you. Yes, I enjoyed some beers last night as well. Maybe too many. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think okay. what's interesting, guys, is uh, you know. Um, well, fi fire away, Gwail, and then I'll get to get to some stuff that I want to ask. Daniel, you run like two different businesses, an export business and a brew pub. I, I love you because you run a brew pub and uh, I got to come visit you one of these days. But how does this coronavirus, everything shut down, nobody out uh, affect you? And not only just affect your brew pub, but affect the export business that you do. Like there's no ships leaving. There's nobody in the factories making mm -hmm. stuff and then they've got this new 600 policies that the the chinese government brought in that you know 
uh, deferring taxes, deferring uh, bank payments because the government sort of backs the banks to all of these different policies. How, do, how, how does that impact you? So obviously the coronavirus in terms of uh, we've stayed shut for quite a long time. This is the first day we've opened and we're only allowed to kind of uh, do delivery and takeaway. Actually, our front entrance, I don't know if you can see it. We've got something blocking it there and uh, I, can't, I can't orient my finger on that screen. And um, we, we, they basically have to wait at the door and we do a takeaway for them. But even even now, I guess people are just starting to get aware that we're open for this business and it's pretty slow even today. But there's stories all across Shenzhen and I'm, I'm sure across China, people kind of on the brink of bankruptcy because of this. I would imagine the policies still rely on a lot of cooperation from everybody because one of the policies also was that the um, companies still need to pay their staff uh, their full salary. But I already know of many companies who aren't doing that. They just can't do it. Um, sure. and, and so with my landlord, he hasn't said anything also yet about any rent free period. And I've asked him. Um, and it's to the point I'm not only paying rent for the shop, I'm paying rent for storage rooms, uh, which are in the parking garage here. And the parking garage is blocked off, so I can't even get to my storage room. So even more so, I'm paying for a storage room that I don't even have access to. So I think there should, they should do something, but uh -huh. they haven't made any commitments. So I think, sorry, yeah. I think, I think they've, they've done some, if you own government or if you rent government owned property, I think there's some rent free period there, but that's only if it's like government properties. Yeah. Um, not not private landlord stuff. So what you're saying, Daniel, is you've turned your uh, brew pub into a, a cold wine and beer store. I, I've turned it into my personal beer shop. No, no. <laughs> in, in Canada, they have cold wine and beer stores where you have to. That's where you go to buy your booze. Is that is that what it's called? Yeah. Uh, we that's we just what, have the LCBO. We just have the LCBO in well, Ontario. Well, that's that's what they used to call it, but now it's cold wine and beer store. So you have to go there and you buy your stuff and you and you take it home and drink it because it's too expensive to drink in the bar. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Now the LCBO. It, so it, it, I don't think it's the same in every province. I know Ontario is particularly a monopoly though on the uh, on the alcohol business. Is it the it's same? Everywhere. It's yeah, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. They, every province makes so much money off the taxes that. Why would they give that up? An alcohol kind of a dictatorship of sorts. No. Yeah. And, okay, and so uh, I, I do feel Shenzhen is starting to slowly get back to some normality. I was over in Shenzhen Bay yesterday in Mix C, and it was noticeably busier than it had been for, for you know, a few weeks. It was people that, in fact, we were actually allowed to sit in Starbucks. It was quite funny because they had one table, one chair, then about a meter, another table, one chair. And I went in there with my son, we went in together, but they wouldn't let us sit together. He had to sit here and I had to sit like six feet away at another chair. So they got these like odd chairs dotted around inside Starbucks. They were doing a lot of takeaway business. But so even the people you go in with, you have to sit separately from them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then they got a little bit annoyed with us because I took my mask off to drink some coffee and started talking to Oliver and the guy came and said, no, if you're talking to him, you need to put your mask back on. So it's, uh, and then there's, a, there's another bit. We, we went to buy a burger at Mix C and we ordered these burgers and we couldn't sit in. So we thought, oh, that's no problem. We're going to sit on the wall over here and eat them. And they wouldn't let us sit anywhere within the Mix C complex to eat the burger. We ended up going out of Mix C complex, sitting on a set of steps near the road to eat our burgers. So I think wow. it's, you know, you, I, I think it's sometimes you get these security guards who are sort of a bit, you know, they're, they're, a, they're above their level, you know, or so it's, it's yeah, they just don't you, know. Yeah. They, just, yeah, exactly. they, they, they overreact. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm sorry because I've been calling like Oliver, I've been calling him Oli. <laughs> no, it's he Oli. prefers Oli. Oh, does he? Because yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, my, my my ancestors are Norwegian, so Oli. I am Oli his fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> but, like, but I saw Oli, not Oliver. I didn't even think Oliver. Yeah, he doesn't like being called Oliver. No way. <laughs> well, yeah, but you see, my 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 dad called me Harold because his name yeah. is Harold, and I don't like that either. So I can understand where he's coming from. Uh -huh. Hey, cheers, guys. Cheers. cheers. Yeah, I, I also got a, another little story about about going out yesterday, and and this triggered by what Daniel was saying today about their government, the government here sort of being a bit maybe willy nilly about letting people come back in. 
So I guess to the to get on the metro yesterday, right? I've got a, a 100 mil bottle of hand sanitizer, and they wouldn't let me take it on the metro. They were adamant really? I couldn't because it, it contained some level of alcohol, and the rules are you can't. And and what I find bizarre about that is surely when they're trying to stop a virus, the the risk of that being an issue from a flammability point of view far is far less than what the issue would be if I was spreading the virus because I can't clean my hands after touching rails and things on the metro. And I thought that I had to go home and take the stuff home and then go back to the metro station, which I found quite bizarre. You know, yeah, if they if they knew, I mean, Kirk and I, they probably wouldn't let us on the uh, subway because as Canadians, we're usually, we're, I mean, also you, Alex, sometimes we're 70% alcohol after we're done at the bar, aren't we? <laughs> but actually, yeah. I, 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 before I left China, I've, I've, I've always, we were going down to the big sea to, to eat supper with friends, and I had a a, a bottle of, of brandy. Well, actually, it was a mixed bottle of brandy in one of my little water bottles, and I'm going in they said, no, you can't take that on. And I, so because they, it could be anything. So I take a drink of it and then, oh, okay, you can go now. <laughs> wow. Can't do that with hand sanitizer. Well, so that, but the idea was, well, we don't know what it is. Well, it's drinkable. Okay, it's okay. Yeah. But this is in Nanning. Nanning is a little bit more backwards in most places. In, but you, like, know, in uh, uh, you know, actually, though, international airports, they do that, too. If you go through with like a baby sippy cup or something like that, or they, they get you to take a little sip of it, and then, uh, yeah, and then you're fine. Sure, I, yeah. I, uh, yeah. So, yeah. You, you, you see, with the situation, Lee, and you're, you know, the examples that you guys have given me about, you know, uh, having to take back some hand sanitizer, uh, not being able to talk uh, without the mask on, I mean, we can at least say that there is a protocol in place. We can at least say that people are following the protocol and they're doing everything that they can to uh, make sure that this is followed so that, you know, they try to prevent this outbreak. But can you imagine trying to implement something like that in Australia, United Kingdom, Canada or the US? Yeah. Would, would everybody be like you, walk home, take it home? Or would there be, we'll call it altercations? Oh, absolutely. Oh, you, you know, in the UK, in the UK, they had to pass like a new emergency law because when they repatriated some of those people from Wuhan, one of the guys that was in quarantine, he, he threatened to walk and we had no law that the authorities could stop him from doing that. So they quickly passed a new law to to stop him um, leaving quarantine. You See, know, in northern like, Saskatchewan, we just taser the bastard. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> He's on the ground, cough him and throw him back into his cell. Yeah, man. You know, I, I think that, uh, you know, been watching this, and it, just to give you an idea how this all kind of came together, uh, this all four of us and stuff like that, it's, it's kind of interesting because um, uh, at around December, I was in Chongqing and I was doing, uh, you know, just so you guys, uh, I can bring you up to speed on my channel. When I uh, go into cities in China, I like to make around 20, 20, around 20 videos, uh, mm -hmm. or we'll call them vlogs of the city. Not, you know, I don't want to be somebody that goes in and says, hey, look at this, uh, Chung Ching in 10 minutes, and then uh, leave the city and never look back at it. So when I go to these towns and cities, I can't even call anything a town in China, but when I go to a city there, I will in detail spend, you know, days, you know, going in seeing seeing what like a brew pub looks like uh, who's running it what's behind it uh, what do the taps look like where's the guard you know just really in detail things and my experience uh, you know uh, doing that i managed to meet uh, you know a, a large media uh, outlet in in the city of chongqing and my ex my first experience there i said yes okay i'm on to something so I came back uh, from Chongqing. It was mid, probably mid January, and then I was getting ready to immediately fly out to uh, Nanning and booked my flights. Everything was fine, and then the good old beer flu uh, came, and I thought, wait a minute. I started seeing something that I've never seen. Okay, I saw it maybe during nine nine eleven when uh, you know the the attack was on America. I seen airlines were shut down for about we'll call it five to seven days uh -huh. but the speed that this started to happen i said to you know guelo i said 
I'm not. He said, "Yay! Hey, look, unfortunately, Alex, we're going to have to cancel yeah, you gonna coming." Yeah, he's going to come over and see me. No, I, I'd already booked, got the hotel booked, everything, and he says, uh, "Sorry, but I'm not going to be able to. I'm going to have to cancel. I'm heading to Canada." And I said, uh, "I don't think you are." And uh, you know, it, uh, Wei Feng was cooking, and I said, "Forget cooking, start booking. You better start booking to Thailand because uh, it's it's whack a mole for the airports here." Yeah. And the speed that they shut down China was. They shut me down in one day. So what's we, we, what's we what's Kurt's favorite airline at the moment? Then is it Air Canada? Oh, I'd say Air. Air, 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 Air. Oh, did I say that out loud? <laughs> no, actually, you know, Air Canada is a, a very inexpensive way to travel around the world, but there are way better carriers. Uh, uh, China Airlines is still traveling from Thailand to Shanghai to Canada. There's so many airlines that are still working around the world, so you you can get there back and forth but you know uh south korea if you go to south korea or transit through south korea now if you have a temperature more than 37.5 celsius they will quarantine you for 14 days bingo bango you're done and and thailand hit the uh the list uh yesterday with the united arab emirates exactly. uh, we're, Tom, we're on Tom, we're on the list Tom now Claudia. yeah Tom i have a Claudia. friend who's i have a friend who's a pilot in dubai he said uh can't bring my girlfriend out from Thailand to Dubai, vice versa. I'd like to see you, Alex. I saw you last week, and I was like, what's up? Oh, Thailand's on the list. So now we've wow. got Italy on the list. We've got Thailand on the list. We've got Turkey on the list. we got Iran on the list. Malaysia showed up. Didn't Malaysia just show up now? Yeah. So what do you guys think about this Iran thing? You've got, what, it was 38 or 40-some uh, cases, but there's 13 dead people. Oh, and, they, and today they've, they've, got, they've got like 50 that have recovered. You know, it's oh, really? like the, I don't know. I don't, all over the place. Yeah. I don't know if you guys saw the news, and I don't know how true this is. I just re re received it before this uh, video, but they're saying that the strain that was tested in Iran is completely different from yeah, the. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm hearing. The, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, exactly. It yeah. didn't originate even in China. Now, again, I don't yeah. know. I, I, I've constantly seen a stream I've, I've of conspiracy heard theories it was on my channel. Washington, Washington D.C. Yeah, I have yes. too. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've tried Chinese yeah. scientists. Yeah, I've, I've done some research. Yeah, there, some there, of their patients. Can you see the the anti-China haters? If we say something like this, on they, they will rip us a new asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it will be. I like, don't. I don't. Yeah, yeah I don't usually birds. tackle it. Yeah, I don't usually tackle it because you know what? I mean, there, there's been a lot of people who have constantly said, well, look at the number of flu deaths in the U.S. this year. It's way higher than usual. Uh -huh. You know, people are saying that if, if, if it originated in the U.S., then uh, people wouldn't have even, uh, they wouldn't have even been testing it for it. So they wouldn't even know. But uh, I take them just as all conspiracy theories for now because you can just go down a, a deep rabbit hole with that and you can get into all kinds of things. So I take it for face value. Sure, yeah. I, I accept that. It, uh, for, it, it appears like it originated in Wuhan, but there's a lot of people out there that are definitely convinced otherwise. Well, I, I, actually, that, there has been some, some signs. It's to do with these markers in the samples they've taken. Some of these markers didn't appear in, in people from Wuhan, but they appeared in people like, like um, Kirk says that had come from Washington and Shenzhen. These, these two yeah. places have different markers to these people in Wuhan in the, whatever it is, the DNA or the, the virus RNA, makeup. Yeah. yeah. And, um, DNA, you know, yeah. so that there is something. Oh. I, and and obviously, the, the, the longer time goes on, the more they're going to find out about this virus. But I think the Iran thing is very interesting um, <clears throat> because, like, like Daniel says, it, it is a completely different strain, apparently. And it was like they had no cases. All of a sudden, they had deaths and quite a few cases. And one interesting thing is Hom, where it originated. It's only apparently 5 million people in Hom. But they have something like 15 to 20 million visitors a year because it's um, sort of a Muslim pilgrimage thing. So they have a yeah. huge amount of travelers to and from Iran simply because of this. You know, you divide 20 million into weeks of a year, and it's a huge amount of people that are traveling backwards and forwards. With with what I've seen on the news and stuff, and I take this with a grain of salt, but I want to go back to, you know, this whole situation in general. Um, my sister works in uh, a lab in um, Canada that tests babies for diseases to save Saskatchewan? them. Saskatchewan? Yes. And uh, and uh, 
she had said to me weeks ago, she said, look at, uh, you know, the numbers that came out from the CDC in the United States, anywhere from 11 to 17 million people die of the flu. Even, even, even the commander in chief, Donald Trump yesterday was actually saying the same numbers that I was spitting out to, to uh-huh. some of my, uh, recent, uh, online chats and the people don't really want to, um, that's not something to be proud of, by the way. No, it really <laughs> what's, what's, what I was saying. Sorry, I, I, I'm just saying that um, in some sense, he's trying to say to the public, which I've been trying to say to the public, let's do a, cons- let's do a, co- you know, a comparison here against the numbers. And uh, let's compare the flu numbers to the current numbers. Now, you're going to get people saying, but it's different, but it's different, but it's different. So when I was having this uh, one-on-one debate uh, with a lady that was in California, she just said, Borders should be closed. Nobody should be allowed in the United States of America. Basta, end off. And I said, so then what has America done uh, with the, uh, what the United States done with the flu season? Have they, have they shut the borders down from the flu? And she says, oh, but we know how to contain this. And we know how to prepare for this. And I said, how? She says, well... We take flu shots, but we we don't want the government to t- make us take these flu shots. We want to be able uh, to take them on our own. And this flu shot's bad. And uh, she was kind of like yeah, a, she one of those an anti vaxxer. She was an anti vaxxer. Yeah, okay, no yeah. problem. So uh, then she pushed forward on this, but we know how to contain this flu. I said, well, then why is there fifty thousand people still dying? And she said, well, it's because you know that's what the flu is. Well. We interviewed the doctor in Wuhan yesterday, Kurt and I, right from the hospital. And the way oh, and he it was, was saying... It was real. I, I know this guy personally. So when, when we were speaking to him, he once again reassured us by saying, look, the delicate ages of 70 and 80, if they were hit with the flu virus or the coronavirus, they're under massive attack. And it's either going to be either or if uh, if one of the, if they get one of the other. It, it's going to be, you know could be catastrophic it, it, it's, now. It's, it's kind of like a threshold thing, isn't it? It's like, it, because it's something we know, it doesn't matter how many people die of it. Sure, you know, yeah, it's yeah. something we don't know. And th- this is the thing, when it. people kind of criticize China also, they don't have a threshold. Like they, they have this thing that just says, they say, China bad. And they don't have a yeah. threshold where they say, okay, after so, so many hundreds of millions of people have been removed from poverty, after this kind of an infrastructure development, after um, this kind of a development from China, they don't have a threshold where they all of a sudden say, well, hold on a second, let me think about this differently. They've got these black and white kind of lines that they draw in their mind. Yes, that's very, and, and, very and, true. Yeah, whether Daniel, it's- yeah, I, yeah. I, think, I, think, I think that's been ingrained in our uh, minds through education over the years, communism is bad. Uh, both Russia and China, uh, Cuba for sure. And uh, they, you know, you go back a hundred years and there was head taxes, there was exclusion acts, there was everything to keep yeah. the, that, that evil yellow fever out of places like Canada and the United States and Great Britain and places like that where you're, you're just seeing another form of it now that, that is yeah, this, just as, this. as racist and, and, and screwed up as it was because you've got these bullies like Trump that that get to the top because there's all these une- uneducated, three T bad haircut, fricking hillbillies, one vote, one person type thing. Yeah, that, yeah. How, how do you control something like that? It, that's my opinion. I, you guys might not think that way. Yeah, but, I, I, I know what you're saying. I, 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 yeah, I, I take it a little a, bit more carefully too, because there are, um, I listen to both kind of, um, left-wing and right-wing media and there's a lot of really highly educated um obviously right-wingers who voted for trump also and the 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 thing that pushed them even more over to that side was by saying those kinds of things just saying oh you know like hillary clinton did the uh, the, you know basket of deplorables and people who think like that are completely you know i'm so i'm a little bit more careful with that but i know what you're i know what you're saying Mm -hmm. there, there, there are good republicans i met one once (laughs) <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm kidding. If I was in America, I would be a Republican, but I wouldn't be that far to the right. You know, there, yeah. there, there's levels of, of right and left in any political system. But, you know, the idea that they have that at the, the, the pinnacle of the, of, the, of the United States government right now, 
Ooh, that's a scary fucking thing for the mm. Canadian, po- you know, the Canadian population being so close to saying, "Oh, this used to be our big brother." Now a lot of people are saying, mm, "Yeah, I don't much like my big brother anymore." Yeah. Well, I mean, my my take on this is, you know, can you imagine somebody else at the helm of the United States there right now? I think his, 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 his no, no. Oh. I mean his. His conversation to the public yesterday, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, Daniel, he made that comparison, but he came out and he says, wait a second here. You know, every, you know, the Democrats went after him and said, you know, you cut the budget for the CDC. He cut the budget that was massively inflated, but they're still getting more money than what they got during, uh, you know, the uh, the Democratic side. But you got to take away from this guy. And he- here's how I view him in power down there. I don't look at him as a politician and I never can look at him as a politician. I look at him as a businessman and he has this swamp that he knows that he has all this bureaucratic tape that he's got to get through. Now, when this happens, which it is happening right now, they're being, uh, you know, they, the general investment public thought it was immune to grounding 80,000 flights a day <laughs> on the world. They felt it was immune to uh, seeing cargo ships sit in the ports in Singapore and Shenzhen. They felt that their economy was immune to it. Now, as of Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, even Thursday, I'm looking right now, I'm looking at the, uh, the uh, futures right now, they ain't looking good either. Mm-hmm. So they have the guy in there that, I think is the guy that if you're going to go through this crisis is going to be able to navigate it through. He's going to say, look, we need, uh, we're going to have to do some policies like China's going to do. We're, we're going to need the fed to come in here and we're going to have to go zero rates for two years because our economy is about to get smoked. We're going to have to come through and deregulate, deregulate, uh, you know, a thousand, uh, you know, things we're going to have to, and that's where I see he has taken off the political hat and he's put on the hat of, hey, you know, he runs America like a company, not a country. Yeah, you know, and uh, you know, it's different. Yeah, yeah I, I think there, there are some overlapping things that would add concern. Like, uh, you know, a, a lot of people cl- um, accuse him of being anti-science or, you know, you can see him wanting to cut the CDC budget by 16 percent. However, when it's all said and done, even with those concerns, I got to be honest. If there was some sort of a global crisis, I'd be more comfortable with him as my leader than I would Justin Trudeau. Oh, no shit. Uh-huh. Like Justin Trudeau, like this guy, what is he? A, a part-time drama teacher that's never finished anything in his life, a feminist, <laughs> and he grew a beard just so he could look older. Like, I can't believe the guy, he, I, I, can't, I can't believe he won again. I can't believe, and this is where you just- Well, you just, because yeah. Sheer is an idiot. No, wow. no, like, hey, if they had Peter McKay in there, not a problem. If they, anybody else, he's just, he's not a leader. He's just not. Yeah, but they, they, he, this is generally the problem with a lot of Western politics is pretty much yes. anybody can get, get into the top jobs. And that's something which is very different here. You know, you look at, you look at top politicians here, they've done 30 years of kind of service, haven't they? You know, they, yeah. they, they sort of serve their apprenticeship. Um, whereas a lot of Western politicians is really who they're connected to. I guess there's a little bit of that in China as well, but pretty much, you know, I, I, what I find unbelievable is out of all the people in the States, it came down to Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. (laughs) Those two people, all of the smart people that could be, you know, running for that job because it all boils down at the end of the day to money. You know, that, well, that it, is a it, massive, it, massive yeah, thing. Yeah, well, it does and it the doesn't. Same thing I, in Canada. Money, I, money, well, money. Oh, most of the Western countries, it's about money, you know? I, I, Alex, yeah, Alex disagrees. I'm, I'm curious. What, what are you... Okay, you know, it's, it's, not blue, it's not helping Bloomberg right now. And he's got all the money in the world to, to help his policy is, you know, he's, he said he would go for almost broke to try to be the president. It's not working. I mean, you can throw all the television ads that you want, but we've got dynasties that have run the white house here. We've got the, you know, the Clinton dynasty, the Bush dynasty that, that Mm -hmm. has, has run them. And if they haven't, it's someone close to them, kind of like the, the, the Putin Medvedev swap, you know, it's, I'll be president. Now you're prime minister Mm -hmm. later. I'll be prime minister. Now you'll be president later. 
And what's happened is somebody's coming in and broke the wheel. But here's where I think the big problem is. And forget, forget uh, our, our disdain for world leaders around the world. Uh, you know, uh, some might not like Trump. Some might not like uh, Macron. Uh, some might like, not like Boris. Who knows? But here's where it's broken. It's broken on the fact that I'll give you a, just I'm going to talk Canada for an example. You've got a country that is geographically the second largest in the world. Okay, so now you have 30 million people in this country and you're a politician. You say, wait, I need to get some money to pay for my 8,400 kilometers of highway that goes from one end to the other each year. I got to fix the road signs, fix the potholes, fix all that. Then I've run a, uh, so then the government says, well, then we got a Canadian railway line that that needs fixing and we need to keep airplanes in the air. The mistake happened that when these countries you know, started to really get going in 70s and 80s, the booming times like that, they forgot one thing, and that's investment in infrastructure. And they're trying to catch up to where the Chinese are now that have 2,800 bullet trains, uh, airports all over the place. You know, you want to go see your mom who's a nine-hour car ride away, you can see her two and a half hours by train. And this is what, no matter who takes control of these countries, the revenue, the pot revenue is not big enough that, you know, okay, we'll let you uh, smoke cannabis this year. We're going to make a lot of money on the taxes. Well, there's a downside. The, the medical system now has more people dealing with, you know, heightened anxiety. They don't know how, where it came from. Could be from that. It, uh, you know, it's all these things that you, they're trying to play all these hats to please everybody, but there's just not mm -hmm. enough people, not enough money, not enough commerce and... Uh, what can we blame them i mean if even if you know i the, the best example i can give and then i'll hand this over to someone is you know and i've been in the restaurant business too daniel i was with earls for quite a few years in in vancouver even if you gave me the keys to a restaurant and you said to me in canada your rent is free your electricity is free and even your water is free all you got to do is pay your salary and pay the goods in and out and your taxes i'll sell you the restaurant for nothing I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even imagine to do that. Even in Vancouver, if he, even if you gave me free rent, and it, and the, you know the the deck is stacked against you. Well, yeah, it's hard. It's, it's, exactly. And when you when you have a government in Canada that allows anarchists to stop the trains and stop the roads and stop all this stuff, and the and the government, the true dope, he's an idiot, uh, says, oh. But we have to talk to these people. These people are, they have no political position in Canada. They don't speak for anybody except for outside interests. Uh, when you get to that position in a country, eh, you know, how would that go over in, in, in China? Would, would, uh, would Xi Jinping and his boys say, oh, that's okay. We'll just let, we'll, we'll, we'll go talk to these guys. No. What do you think they would do? They would throw their ass in jail. They wouldn't do it again because jail is hell in China. There's so, there's and, so many things. There's so many things. That, okay, you finish? Yeah. Well, no, but see, jail is hell in, in China. And it's not a place where you get a free television. You get a free bed, all the food you want to eat. You got a gym and all this other stuff. When you go to China, uh, China jail, you get treated like shit. You get shitty food and you do not want to go back there ever I got again. A bunch, I, I got a bunch of things I got to address here. Are you finished or no? You got to go. You, you keep going. If you get, you, you got to keep going. going. You, you okay. go. You, so, you know, what, you know what I'm saying? No. Like, so, yeah. Well, there's, so there's a few things. So one in, in terms of uh, infrastructure and the way the political system works, um, Eric Lee, I don't know if you've seen Eric okay, Lee do his talk on how the political system works in China. And you were absolutely right in terms of um, early in terms of people slowly working their way up and having to prove themselves um, you know and then in the, in the West especially in America you've got lobbyist groups obviously that back people and, and and pay a lot of money to get these people elected and you have to ask yourself what's you know what kind of a return on investment are these people expecting and you end up having of them course, work companies. yeah and there are plenty of people the people that, that show that but uh, I, I gotta say something against in terms of dynasties you're talking about Alex the, the thing that people will say to somebody like us who who points that out, they'll say, well, what about Xi Jinping? Xi Jinping's uh, uh, removed the term limits, right? And he's in power. And that, that's something I struggled with in the beginning. Um, and it was back when, because I was actually, I was not really necessarily pro-China or anti-China, but I consumed a lot of anti-China content. And when 
it was clear that he wasn't looking for a replacement. I was the one sharing those, um, what was it, like the Financial Times articles where they said Emperor Xi and they had him in emperor clothes and stuff like that. And I said, this is messed, this is messed up. But the thing is, is what you got to look at is you got to look at, and, and for, for me, opening this bar and seeing what's happening in China, there's a lot of positive that's happening. And he has this war on corruption, which, which yeah, he's yeah, kind yeah. of fighting right now. And there's a massive difference when I first arrived here in 2008 compared to now. And if he changed right now while he's in the middle of this war on corruption, there's a very high chance that it would go back. It would get reset. And there are provisions in place for Western governments that when they are fighting a war, that they can continue on for a certain period of time. I don't know if he's expecting to continue on forever. I hope not. <laughs> but uh -huh. um, I see why he's got to do this now. And then if you look at the trade war also, these guys can just wait it out. They can wait until, wait yeah. until Trump is done. If, if Trump is too hard a nut to crack, they'll just wait. They'll wait yeah. till the next year. It's only China, years. China are all about playing the long game. They, they don't care yeah. about a very short term. They much more see the longer game. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think well, they I do think have 50 year terms. And, and, and so, I think yeah. they're understanding. Right, right. And, 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 and so um, I think it's really important that he finishes what he's got to do here and then, you know, pass the torch. But um, the one thing I want to address, too, is in terms of, uh, Kurt, it, 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 some of your perceptions about what would they do if people were blocking roads and stuff like that. I think that's a little bit off because, you know, here in Guangdong, we had some protests not too long ago. It was in November or December where um, they were uh, protesting, I think it was in Maoming, they were protesting a, uh, a, cremator a crematorium and it got really violent. Uh, people that that would be the one where they're burning hundreds of bodies a day, 24 hours a day, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's coincident coincidental that we're talking about that. But what they ended up doing was finally the government said, okay, and they canceled it and they gave everybody amnesty, even the ones who got like a little bit, you know, uh, uh, violent. Okay, uh, Daniel, but, but that's a little bit different than trying to shut down the economic uh, powerhouse of a whole country your your trains are shut down they they shut down uh bridges they, yep. they shut yep. down border crossings and, and stuff because a small minority of anarchists say well this is our agenda and we don't want this going on in canada they don't care about what the the general public wants they only care about what they want so i can understand in china that these small uh, things well, yeah. where, 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 where you yeah, do sorry. have disagreements, that's fine. But when you're when you're actually changing the economic outcome of a whole country by doing stuff like this, would China put up with that? Absolutely no, not. Nobody would actually. You know, Canada is a special place in that regard because if you look at, I mean, even in Hong Kong, what they did, like they kind of cut off major arteries of roads. They were uh, lighting police on fire. They acid burned them. They bricked a man to death. They lit a man on fire. And if they block the roads like they did in Hong Kong, or they block the main airport, or the only airport in in the U.S., they wouldn't have accepted that either. So in that regard, no. Canada's a little yeah. bit uh, Canada's quite soft um, because that's not a matter of just saying China would not accept that. There's a lot of other places that wouldn't accept that in that well, regard. Canada has accepted it. You know, I I, I get the focus on Canada. I mean, we're a, such a minor player on the world stage. And I think we're, what's got us into this, uh, you know, definitely my focus on China is, is that, you know, I like to bet on a winner. And um, when you see and you arrive to the shores of China for the first time, which I did back in 2002, I was, you know, walking the back streets of Shenzhen at the time. And I was with my wife and we were at a um, kind of like a consumer electronics show. And uh, we were buying some stuff for our online business because we, we do purchasing out of China every day. And I started to see, you know, the, the boys packing all the equipment in the back alleys and running it. And I turned to her and I said, we are in trouble here, you know, in the West. Look at the magnitude of this production. Look at how fast it's being brought to the consumer we cannot compete with this. And, uh, you know, I came back and I really started to focus a lot on China. And of course, you know, members of my family, like, are you crazy? What are you doing? How, what are you going to China? It's, it's communist. Careful, you're not going to get thrown in jail. You know, the, the typical things, um, you know, they, they have nets outside the building for pe to catch people from committing suicide and all these, all these wonderful stories. I think that's and, Japan. 
<laughs> and so I, I, I yeah. yeah, and I and I went past Foxconn's uh, warehouse there, uh, and I said, you know, this isn't true. And I was trying to convince my mother, who uh, it's pretty hard to convince. And uh, I said, no, mom, you, what I'm seeing here is not what you're reading. And the more I kept going back to China, the more I was getting annoyed to come back into the Western countries because I was continually defending, you know, hey, guys, you should see this is amazing uh, infrastructure. They got amazing trains. Oh, but how many? I, we heard thousands of people died making these trains. Okay. So then you'd switch the topic on, well, they got the best airports in the world. Well, if they pay, that's because they're paying everybody $20, $20 a month. You know, just outrageous stuff. So then you fast forward to 2020. And the stereotypes still exist. You'll talk with somebody. Oh, it's like, time. well, the 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 reason why um, it's it's cheap Chinese product. And I said, well, do you have an iPhone? Yeah. Is it cheap? No. Well, it's uh, you know, well, it's made in China. Yeah. Well, you know, Apple. Well, do you know that Apple's margins are so huge that you're blaming China for making an item relatively decent price that then the profits wind up on the shores of the United States and now you're so who are you blaming here you're blaming the Chinese for making a product so that Apple can make a 70 percent margin on it and then pump up their balance sheets and I hey that's commerce to me that's that's a win-win what I'm trying to say to these people is if you're an American what on earth are you doing, you know, shutting your borders to China, closing your ports to China, closing your commerce to China? You know, shame on you. Look what's, look what's happening. You're getting smacked on the financial market now like there's no tomorrow. You, th these countries are so connected, uh, whether it's e-commerce, whether it's the money that's being transferred back and forth. And then at the end of the day, when we get a nation that has helped build our electronic sector, whether it's you know uh, Qualcomm or even the, some of the mobile networks, we get angry that some of these hardworking Chinese people want to come to our country to buy a house, just like Brits do hmm. in the south of France or like they do in Spain. They want to buy a house outside of the country. They want to take that you know all that money that they've made, they've worked hard for, and invest it outside of the country, just like other Westerners do. And then we blame them for driving up the real estate prices. Now, isn't this ironic? How are so many people that are making twenty to sixty dollars a month managing to buy all these wonderful properties around the world, invest in it, and sit on it? Then you'll get people. Yeah, well, it's our neighborhood is empty with empty homes because they don't come here often. Are they paying the property tax? Yes, they are. Are they bringing their kids to go in the school if they're not in their house? Well, no, they're not going, they're not paying, you know, they're paying their tax, but, you know, it's, it's sad, it's an empty street. But they're helping you fund your tax system, and they're not even there using the garbage, uh, you know, disposal and stuff the like services. that. So it just, it, it just, it, if somebody just took the time to maybe take 10 hours a year in the Western school systems instead of uh, having uh, 12 hours a month on gender studies. We put it on international studies on what e-commerce is <coughs> and what these countries are. Maybe our society would have a chance to understand on what on earth is going on in this world. Except yeah, you know, but, but Alex, if, if they didn't have gender studies, I wouldn't know what to identify as. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. every time I go back to the UK, all, all the time I grew up, most of the images of China I saw on the TV were Beijing, people wearing the grey clothes, riding around on bicycles, right? And it is only perhaps in the last maybe five to eight years that that has changed. Now you get pictures of Shanghai. But I'm always amazed. I'll go back to the UK and when I talk to people, all the people I talk to, oh, yeah, China this, and they do this, and this is what it's like, and this is what it's like. All right, hang on a minute. How many times have you been to China? Oh, no, I've never been, but I know all about it. And, and they think they know more about it than somebody who's, like, spent eight years there because it's so ingrained into their heads of what they've been pushed from the media for year after year after year. And it's so difficult to, to change their mind. My parents are the same. They're starting to open up a little now because I show them so many videos and pictures and stuff like that. Ollie's other grandmother, not, not my mother, when he spoke to him when he first moved, he says, 
Oh, so they have supermarkets in China, do they? Oh, that's that's interesting. I didn't didn't know they had supermarkets in China. And this is like a woman who's like 70 years old, you know, and because all her life she's been pushed these images that they're poor people who ride bicycles, you know, and, and it's so difficult to change that that mentality of, of those Western people, you know. Well, not yeah, not yeah. only that, but you, you see, I, I see stuff on Facebook every day where, oh, the Chinese government is banning the sale of uh or anything to do with wild animals. And I, and, and I look at this as sort of like a slap in the face because I come from Saskatchewan where we, we go hunting and we go fishing. So you go out you know, shooting, shoot, right? Shoot, shoot, shooting a deer, an elk, a moose, hanging it in your garage, uh, you know, yeah. wild animals, you know, dressing it, uh, you know, and, and cutting it up and, and making that your main focus for food for the next six months. Is, is a regular thing in Canada. And I get this from my Canadian friends that I grew up with. So I call them on it and then they, then they call me on it and they say, well, geez, you know, how dare you talk to me like this? Wow. You know, it's like, it's these things are- In Australia too. I mean, Australia, my, uh, my buddies there of uh, Russian descent, they go out in the outback once in a while or wherever it is and they, they, they go kangaroo hunting and, they, and they, they barbecue up the kangaroo. And that's, well, that's an important thing. I yeah, bet you I that hope. would taste good, eh? We should go do that for a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Barbecue, beer drink it. We'll take beer for the, the, the fruit well, yeah, I, yeah. I think here, here's the biggest thing that uh, I'm more concerned about now. We have, China's got a massive image problem now. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's because of this virus that has been spewing onto oh, the media yeah. for yeah <laughs> been, and, been... And, two, and two people are in canada they don't help the situation too but sorry not canada california those those two californian circus performers <laughs> <laughs> oh the california ca uh clouds yeah, the california clouds. well you see I think but this how, how do we get past this how do we get past this now i mean we, we are really yeah, we're yeah, at a crossroads yeah, you know, now. people people are just you know what the the, the thing is, is if it wasn't this it would be something else they're always going to find something to villainize china mm -hmm. on and it, it, it really affects you you know what i mean when i when i first came to china um even the first what, five or six years i was here i was still i was living here i was enjoying my life i was living in the village areas of Shenzhen, seventh floor, no elevator. The first two years I lived here, I didn't even have air conditioning, so I roughed it the first couple of Whoa. years. And, oh yeah, and that, you you can imagine. Tougher than me, man. Yeah, and uh, just a fan. I had a fan, <laughs> and I've seen all uh, parts of China, and I loved it. But I was still kind of anti-China. I was still very kind of against the government. And you know, my uh, uh, my, my my wife's family. Um, so my wife is Chinese, as you guys know. Um, they were affected by the whole kind of growing up. They had a really rough situation. Uh, my my uh, father-in-law, he was almost labeled as a counter-revolutionary or whatever it was when he he he, he spent uh, years raising this pig and selling it. Got a little bit of money, and the other villagers got jealous. And so they were affected by the system. It was terrible here. And even him, I, I, I can't convince them when, when before, when I was looking at these, this anti-China content like Ai Weiwei's uh, Nothing to Envy or whatever it is, all these kind of anti-China documentaries, I would show it to them. Or, or there's another movie, uh, To Live, um, about the Cultural Revolution, yeah, um, really beautiful movie. And I showed that to my father-in-law and he had to stop halfway through and he couldn't finish it. He said, this is too real. And, and it, he's not an emotional guy and he just couldn't finish uh -huh. it. And even though... Even with all of that, they still love their country and they still love everything. Yes, and I was always yeah. saying, I was always like, man, these guys are really brainwashed. And then it took me, it took me six years of actually living here to finally say, oh shit, maybe, maybe I'm the one who's brainwashed. Maybe it's me who's brainwashed. So it took me, and I think I'm pretty open-minded. I, I think I, I like to think about things from different angles. It even took me six years of living in China to all of a sudden change my mind on it. And uh -huh. so for you to say, what does it take to change somebody's mind overseas? Oh, man, that's, that's, a, that, that's a tough it's one. A, uh, so Daniel, <laughs> Daniel, are most of your customers expats or Chinese no, or is no, there a mix? 95, 90, it, it's, so most people, most foreigners most who open Chinese. up businesses here, uh, they have mostly foreign customers. But um, it, ours is 95% Chinese. 
Oh, wow. Okay. So if we were to show up, all, all the other three of us were to show up at your bar, would you charge us for the beer? Or would, would we just do this? Uh, like... Uh, on a, on a, beers on, on a, me. Beers on a, me. A free uh, yeah. tab. As long as, like, yeah. As long as you guys behave. As long as you guys behave. It's, no, uh, we can't. We can We can't. We can't well. guarantee that. <laughs> Dan, Daniel, how long can how long can the the beer that you've produced and stuff stay bottled? So, I mean, it's... Uh, uh, so 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 it depends on the type of beer. We um, put all of our beers in kegs. So there's a few things that will make beer go bad. Um, one is, uh, well, so one is obviously time. Uh, one is temperature. So we keep all of our beer in uh, cold rooms after we keg them off. Uh, 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 one is UV, um, but UV doesn't get into our stainless steel kegs. And the other is okay. oxygen. And so with oxygen, we purge our kegs uh, three or four times with CO2 before we fill it. So we have pretty good control of our, of our um, uh, CO, uh, of our oxygen levels. And then um, depending on the beer type, uh, hop, and we have pretty some pretty hoppy beers here. Hops is a natural uh, preservative. It acts as a natural preservative. So some of our uh, more hoppy beers, um, ideally you want to drink it fresh and get that fresh hop flavor, but they can last like six months without a problem. Okay. So mm, most of our really? beers, you know, it, it have been, you know, uh, some of our, we, we've got some beers that have been sitting here for a while and we've got some new ones in the tanks. But have you told okay. stop? have you stopped producing right now? So, uh, uh, no, yeah, we sure, uh, go one ahead. Second, one second. It's like, so you're making all of this beer, but there's right. nobody coming to your door. So what do you do with it? Do you drink it all yourself? Because <laughs> Guela will come and help you if you need anybody oh, to drink it. <laughs> like, I can, like, Dan, I can be there tomorrow. You know oh, I see. It was a, lo it was a loaded say, as question. A, as a Canadian, I have the ability to be there basically tomorrow. To help you get yeah, all this your is the, This is the generosity of Canadians that we're paying. <laughs> exactly. You know, I, I'm just yeah. thinking about you, man. Take one for the team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And do you have food there as well at your your? Yeah, we do. We, 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 we've got a kitchen here. Um, but now that we're opening for delivery, uh, we're not we're not opening the kitchen. I don't think anybody's going to order order out. I mean, we've we've been cooking at home. Uh, also, and most people they don't want to order uh, food from outside right now. Everybody's kind of cooking at home. Uh, so it doesn't well, so make sense for us to reopen the kitchen, but we do have a kitchen. And Are you buying your food, food from the wet market? Uh, what's that? What Are you type buying of your food, food from the wet market? Oh, uh, all 100% wild animals. <laughs> no, seriously. Are you buying your food from the wet market? Because <laughs> when, 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 I, when I'm in Manning, we only buy food from wet markets. We don't buy... Uh, um, so we, we uh, when you, you, we've got suppliers. So suppliers, they, they'll probably uh, get it from wherever the places are that the wet markets get them from beforehand, uh -huh. before it even arrives in a wet market. And uh, we have to place our order the day before, and they deliver it in the morning. Um, so they're big, they're big uh, food suppliers. Um, okay. So not really wet markets. We don't have somebody going sure. out. Uh, yeah, unless we're uh, just, creating just a new a, dish. Yeah. Yeah, just something interesting. I've had. In all the time I've been in China, I've had less food poisoning than when I was in the UK. And I put it down to that. If you, when Chinese people cook food, one, they slice the meat generally pretty thin before they cook it. There's not many places in China that cook great big like roast joints of meat. And also, you look at the, the, the temperature they cook a lot of stuff at. They, they get those what, you know, gas ring in the UK, you can turn it from low to medium to high. Here, it's like either on or off, isn't it? It's like a jet engine under the wok. So when yeah. that food goes into a wok, it is seriously seared. And I think that goes a long way to killing a lot of bacteria in the, the Actually, meat. that's actually diesel. What they're, they're hitting that sucker with. No, seriously. I know lots of cooks. I used to do uh, uh, immigration for, for a lot of cooks going into Canada. That's mm -hmm. freaking powerhouse diesel shit. My God. So are you, are you concerned, uh, Daniel, when you're about to reopen here? I mean, are you going to lose any staff or, uh, you know, is it, I mean, it going to be not, hard? It, it, you no, know, I mean, it's not like staff can find a job easily anywhere else right now. So we've got them on uh, retainer right now. We're still paying them um, according to the, you know, according to the law. And uh, that, that's not a concern uh, because it's not like people can find a job anywhere else right now. Everywhere is kind of in the same boat right now. I was listening to the, uh. um, 
to one of the economic ministers in China today, and he was basically saying, "Look, we're gonna we're gonna flood the market with money." Now, I don't know what that means. I mean, if free money is good, but uh, you know, even loans at the very low interest rates and even flexibility, it's almost like asking somebody to double down. Well, I think I, I think so. China financially have a lot in reserve. You know, you, you just look at their foreign reserves of American dollars. Oh, the government, yeah, they, they, they? You know, they they got the, so much money right. they can throw at it if they need to. There, 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 I, there's something else that's going on, in, uh, and and I mean, Alex, if you're into money markets, if you've looked at some of the speculation about what China's doing with their money, in in terms of slowly moving towards potentially all of a sudden dropping a bombshell in terms of how many how much gold reserves they have, and then changing the renminbi into a gold reserve currency. There's a lot of really smart people talking about this. I've got a friend here who's talking about it, but there's also a guy on uh, YouTube called Mark Moss, and he's a Bitcoin guy. He's really into Bitcoin, but he did this analysis uh -huh. on what he thinks China is doing with their currency, and it's um, yeah. I, I think they've got. I think they've got a few tricks up their sleeve. Yeah. Yeah. What I, what I mean about the, you know the the you know government's one thing, but I mean, how do you filter down the money to people like you to keep the lights on and keep the staff paid? That's what it's, I'm getting it's, at. It's, yeah, yeah, it's going to be difficult. I mean, um, uh, so for, for me here, I mean, we're, you know, if, if, if the landlord doesn't give us any concessions, obviously we still have to pay our staff. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to uh, infuse the company with some more cash. Like it's just yeah, it, it's not. And there's a lot of people. If you imagine huge kind of uh, franchises or companies that have multiple locations, it, it's going to be really, really hard to recover from this. Sure, um, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. I mean, we're going to like gonna I, see, I think we're yeah, we're gonna yeah, see like, a lot of people out of business. Like I said, this is worse than 9/11, and people don't realize. I mean, you're you're hit, you're seeing sensational headlines. You know, Japan has now closed all its schools until the second of March. You've got Saudi Arabia barring uh, pilgrims from the Mecca. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just it's. You, you basically, you've said everybody uh, go home, watch Netflix, and uh, talk to us next quarter. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to take China a long time to get back to normal. Because I think Sorry, even, yeah. even no, when I, I you know, it's, it's free, people are going to be nervous about going back to restaurants. And I think Daniel made an excellent point in his video today about now that they're, they're, they're still letting flights come in. So, so that the situation is getting better in China, but getting worse everywhere else around the world. So what's the situation like if people are flying into China? Are they going to bring it back in? You know, it, it only takes one stupid person to set the whole thing off again but once again this isn't really i i don't want to sound uh insensitive here but i mean this is uh, you did anybody ever see what happened to sars they never found a vac vaccination for it it just went no, away no, no. Yeah, and it had a it had a high kill rate mayors had a the, high kill rate the, the idea is that way fong and i are, are like our basic idea was to go back to Canada, but uh, Canada's cold right now, and we know that this virus doesn't like warm weather. So we're in time. Well, we don't know oh, that for sure. A, I, don't, I don't think there's any. Well, actually, 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 yes. actually, it comes from doctors and stuff. I'd rather believe doctors than undoctors. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, sure. but but the idea is that if uh, Nanning. Southern China it gets warm in another month because we're going to KL to, on on Monday because our visa runs. Or, or actually, we don't need a visa to come into into, into mm -hmm. Thailand. They just sort of stamp you for thirty days. So our thirty days are up here on Tuesday. So we have to leave on Monday. So we're going to go down to KL and then Bali and whatever. And then we're going to come back. But the but the idea is. That we when we come back, we've got another thirty days to sort of watch what happens in Canada and the United States because this thing seems to be spreading around and it seems to be hitting the colder countries, South Korea and Canada and the United States and Italy and you know, places that aren't that warm in Thailand. Iran's pretty warm now. Well, Iran is pretty warm, but how do you know what actually is happening there? Yeah, I, I, I'm not convinced about, about this sort of warmer weather thing. I really don't know. I mean, personally, I, I'm i one of the sort of people who are a little bit high risk. I'm asthmatic and I've got a dodgy kidney, right? I personally feel safer here in Shenzhen than 
I think I would be in most Western countries now because I've seen the action the Chinese government take. And I'm pretty convinced there's pretty much no other Western government that could act as. You just look at the situation, right? I did in my video today, right, some research. Ontario in Canada have conducted more tests than the whole of the USA. Up until, I think, the 26th of February, the USA had conducted 425 tests. The UK has already done 7,000 with a fraction of the population. You know, the, the USA, and apparently some people are commenting, oh, it costs like $3,000 to have a test in the US. Yeah, yeah of and I'm thinking, you know, I'm, well, I'm thinking that, personally that, now, you'd be at more risk going to some of those Western countries than staying here in China. That's my well, thought. That, that's basically what we're saying is I say, well, okay, do we go back to Canada or... Do we go back to Nanning? You know, after after it's all said and done, okay, she's getting warmer in Nanning. It's still cold in Canada on Vancouver Island. So when we come back from Kuala Lumpur and Bali or whatever, whatever we do, we go back to Bangkok or to Alex's place and whatever. So what is our, our end game is, damn, you know, mm. maybe, maybe we won't go back to Canada. Maybe we'll just go back to Nanning when we started because I think that the the Chinese people have it more under control uh, definitely. than the I Western so. people could ever could ever do. You know what in, I mean? In like the UK, they, they have such, I, I think, uh, I looked at the latest figures, we have something like a, a 97% um, sort of rate of hospital beds already taken. Yeah, yeah. We, have like a, yeah. we have like virtually no capacity whatsoever and they've already said in the UK, if this kicks off, people are just going to have to stay at home, basically, you know, because we, we won't have room in the hospitals. That that That's the bottom line. Well, um, and one of the gosh. one of the things that just shakes my ass is we like the only reason that we're going back to Canada is because Wei Fang has reconstructed surgery mm -hmm. on her chest because she had cancer. OK, so uh, July or August and they sort of zero in on a couple of months when they when they do this okay so we're going back for this in a time like this where the the, the hospitals could be full of these coronavirus people mm, i don't think i want to put my wife in there and as a canadian because we have free health care and all this other stuff because we pay our taxes we can put that off for an indefinite time period, sure, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe next summer isn't the best time to do something like that. So maybe going back to Manning is the the best scenario for us. You know, what you, I mean? you, you know, my live stream yesterday, I was on this live stream, this American live stream. It's kind of like a conservative live stream. I got absolutely, pretty much hammered by everybody in the chat forum and uh, even one of the guests when. They said to me, we need to shut the borders of the United States. And I said, okay, well, you well, know. They should, you, they should sh shut the borders yeah, of the I, United States because nobody likes Americans. Leave them down there. <laughs> Their beer is shit. Okay. So, <laughs> so on this live stream when I was chatting to this uh, conservative group of people, uh, you know, and it, most of the stuff we agreed on, but when it came around to this uh, coronavirus, they said, well, we, yeah, we need to close the borders and we need to shut down uh, everything and we need to do it with China. I said, well, you've pretty much done that to China. I said, is Iran on the list? Well, yeah, I said, is, is, your, is your land border with the United States and Mexico closed? Well, yeah, it's closed. I said, so nobody's getting across. Not one person's getting across. Well, maybe there is. And how about Canada? Is there people coming across from Canada? And they said, well, we need to fully close the border. I said, so every time something like this comes up, whether it's swine flu, H1N1, bird flu, uh, SARS, MERS, all these things, um, the initial reaction is to blow up the economy, shut everything down. That's their solution. And I said, you can't do that. Oh, yes, we can. We we've been through a lot and we can be strong as a nation to get through it and they their their conclusion was we can stock up on durable goods and consumables and we can weather the storm and this is the mentality of most of the people when it comes to you know 
I'm gonna say it's the anti-China. Let's 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 close the mothership. Let's take it up so nobody is allowed on the mothership, and we'll survive. And this is not uh, that's not a solution, but it's it's crazy how the world feels that that is a, the answer to, you know, playing little house on the prairie where we'll build a bonfire and we'll eat vegetables that we grew over yeah. the summer to survive. It, it's this is not sustainable. And what I'm saying is. This is going to completely unravel. Uh, you know, I think the Chinese are going to be able to weather this one, but this is going to unravel the American economy. And I yeah. started watching it last Wednesday, three weeks ago, when the market was still going up. Mm -hmm. I was starting to sell certain type of uh, insurances and stuff on the index, betting against the American market. We're saying, you know what? This is not – what What am I missing that the rest of the financial market was doing a week and a half ago, going up? Sure. And and the average person says, "Oh, we're fine. We don't need yeah. you know. We got everything. Our well, they, store they, shelves they are full." Realize, that was they weird, don't eh? realize how, how, how reliant on the Chinese on the China on China they are. They don't realize that you know it's not only finished goods that come for it's huge amounts of components. I mean, one one thing, Jaguar Land Rover in the UK, they're gonna have to stop production the next four or five days because they ain't getting parts. You know, John De John Deere as well. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's Toyota. Millions then, of companies all around the world who heavily rely on China because years ago they couldn't, they fell over themselves I, to come I and needed, get the I needed to get from parts China to make a transmission for a Toyota. You know what I mean? Shit well, like what's, this. What's, what's even crazier is that you try to say, they say, well, it's good because now it's the time for Americans to, uh, you know, bring the manufacturer i'm not just talking well, America, but well, the supply chain uh, it's not the supply it's chain but i'll happen. give you i'll give you one just basic example and th this should pretty much say it all if you were to open up let's say a manufacturing and i'm not talking an assembly plant which most people call think is manufacturing assembly mm -hmm. plant i look at is somebody ordering brakes steering wheels and yeah, parts yeah. from china and basically building a Lego car, but we'll call that U.S. manufacturing. If you, if any person in this panel wanted to open up a flat screen, let's see, a, you know, a, a LED wow. screen uh, company in the U.S., you would go exactly. there and you'd say, okay, you, you would try to, you would try to um, open up this manufacturing plant. Okay, so you get the plant open. Now, where are you going to get your components from? Probably China, unless yeah. you have the intellectual property. Uh, is somebody going to risk a billion dollars to try uh, open up, uh, you know, a, a plasma screen plant that then will be walked over by the United Auto Workers or some union that will come in there and just crush the, the you know, the the bottom line, and then it's over. And I just don't get that that people don't quite calculate that into their 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 equations they seem to think that um this manufacturing is going to be replaced overnight and I, I i actually don't think it's ever going to be replaced uh, it's not it's never going to happen only for very specially sort of high-end stuff but for the general consumer goods it's never going to happen in a million years is he coming back oh him? can you still hear me can you yeah still? yeah, yeah wait, i had a oh, going back just just, I'm, on, I'm on my uh, mobile phone. Just, I have, drink, um, I, just drink it all yourself, Dan. I have, a, I have a question for you, Daniel. What would be the strategy as a business owner inside of China to reboot when you're ready to go? What, what have you thought about that? Have you thought? What? I mean, there, there, there's. I mean, other than just doing the best you can do, there's not much. There's not much else you can do. I mean, th th these are all things that are based on kind of um, outside elements here. Um, everybody's mm -hmm. kind of suffering the same. Uh, the only thing we can do is try to kind of out compete other people and just, you know, do a better job at marketing, but everybody's going to be kind of trying to do the same thing. Yeah. Um, there's so many, yeah, outside kind of calculations and influences at this point that there's, there's see, not what, much. To, yeah. yeah. See what I see. variables you can't uh, control. Uh, you know? I, I think I, I have to ask Daniel, is your beer better than your neighbor's beer? Well, that's what it's got. It's got. It is. Yes, of course. I'm going to say that. Whether it is or not, right? But, um, <laughs> but that, that, that's exactly it. You just have to do everything better than everybody else. But that's what you do on a regular basis, anyways, right? Um, Basically. So, yeah. Do you think there's going to be guys? And this is for the whole panel and everybody to kind of think about it. And it's another question I wanted to ask: Is 
you know, you, the businesses rely on the domestic market, of course. When you got 1.3 to 1.4 billion people, that's yeah. that's kind of good to have the domestic market. But two two parts of this question. One is, is the international tourist and traveler to China, are they gone? And number two is, um, when you reboot this market, is it the Chinese are going to travel less and become unified and travel within and spend money? Which you know, that's, so it's kind of like a two-part question. And Chinese are going to go out and do whatever the fuck they want because they're Chinese. They, yeah, they want to see the rest of the world. Yeah, they, they, the they, they, they don't care. They they love travel. They, they, they don't love care. going abroad. And they got lots of bucks in their jeans, boy. I tell what you. About, yeah. What about the international market then? Is it dead dead on arrival then, basically? I, I think that's more. more. Yeah, tourism. I mean, I don't even know what what what, what is the, the does tourism really make up a, a huge percentage of the Chinese kind of uh, domestic economy? I don't think I don't, it does. No, I don't. Uh, I, I don't think it China has a lot makes, to do with China the makes a lot of uh, China makes a lot of the economy for foreign markets, especially you know because a, a lot of the Chinese who travel abroad are the big spenders when they go to like America, Canada, Europe. They spend a lot of money. I think I think those countries will suffer a lot if the Chinese tourism drops a lot, but I think it will rebound pretty quickly. It did after SARS. I yeah, think I think what's going to happen is, is probably what, what we're going to see is um, uh, China will probably have some sort of a campaign uh, to get everybody to kind of do whatever they've got to do in terms of uh, you know uh, I, I don't know I don't know how it will whether it's just as basic as spending in the local economy or something like that. I'm sure that they're going to do something to kind of get people to rally together to uh, um, uh, kind of fix this. And, and that's the benefit you have here with, a, uh, you know, a more kind of a bipartisan society. I don't know how that's mm -hmm. going to materialize, but... You know, Daniel, uh, I think you're right on that one because I've already seen it a lot, like the CGTN. Uh, they ask us questions and say, well, how can we reboot our the tourism into, into China? What do foreigners think about this particular thing? You know, so yeah, I I think that's that's one of the things that the, that's on their mind at this point. At this point, you, you know what I think they'll do. I mean, as crafty and as smart as they are, they I think they will. They, they <laughs> I think that they will go on a blitz, like you said, Daniel, and they will go on a promotion campaign, and they will invite international big names into the country uh, to have one massive celebration and party over an extended period of time to say, hey, look, this person's coming. But my last one is, do you guys think they'll rename Wuhan? No. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, well, everybody around have you guys, the world have you, have you guys been to Wuhan? Have you guys been I to Wuhan? It was, I was supposed China, to be there China, in May. China's not like that. Uh, yeah. They don't do that. Uh, yeah, no. they're, yeah. they're proud of all of their uh, all of their cities, all of their provinces, everything. Yeah. That have you been? China. Have you been to Wuhan, Kurt? No, I haven't been to Wuhan. Oh, okay. yeah, I've, been, I've been there That's three actually times. Actually, one uh, of the I've only, only pe places yeah. that I haven't been to. I did immigration all around the country, where I had to go and 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 jump around the country for about seven years, and Wuhan was one of the places that people just didn't want to leave. To go to it's another a beautiful country. city. Beautiful well, city. that's probably why I didn't do immigration work there because they didn't want to leave. Yeah, this oh, immigration. No, city. <laughs> this yeah. immigration work. I don't. It sounds like somebody Guangxi was just province. Yeah, I, don't know. I live now. <laughs> I never had a client from Guangxi province either. Guangdong province in Beijing and Shanghai and Hong Kong and freaking everywhere else around the country. I had clients from, but. Not in Guangxi province. Yeah. No, Wuhan's, like, Wuhan's a beautiful city. Uh, they're going to bounce back. And I think that you're going to have the Chinese people behind whatever efforts are needed to uh, reboot the yeah, economy and restart right. things. I think this, there's a double whammy here because something really interesting happened with um, the Hong Kong protests, with the whole situation in Hong Kong. Was quiet. that. Quiet. <laughs> well, well, no, no, no. Actually, in terms of unity in China, I, I have a lot of friends in China who are either local, they've never left China, or who have studied overseas and worked overseas. And a lot of my friends who get all of their news through VPNs, um, who are internationally educated Chinese, they always respected Western systems and the way things worked in the West. And after what they saw that happened in Hong Kong, 
and, and you guys probably know, I got very vocal in terms of uh, the Hong Kong stuff. I, I watched I every used, one yeah. of them, Daniel. Oh, nice. That's what yeah, I, 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 I flew there well. as well. I did a report there as well. I flew yeah, there. Yeah. And, 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 and so what happened? Yeah, what happened was that all of these people who respected Western systems, Hong Kong made them re-examine and said, you know what? I'm actually not so sure about this anymore. Mm -hmm. Especially when they especially when they considered how good the Hong Kong people were, uh, well, the, not the Hong Kong people. It's not all of the Hong Kong people are, that are that are like this, but the ones who were, uh, um, you know, causing a lot of violence and really um, doing some pretty despicable things. How well they controlled the international narrative and how well they fooled everybody else in terms of what they were doing, and so that was a kind of a turning point for Chinese people. So that was the first thing that really brought people together and people who mm -hmm. weren't necessarily because there are a lot of Chinese people who are not pro-China. I mean, they're, 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 they've got yeah. their own minds and, and, and people don't realize that. Like I go out to RV meetups and you get people arguing about the government, some people who like the government, some people who don't. But after this Hong Kong stuff, people became really unified here. And then this, I think, is going to be a second thing where it really kind of bolsters that even more. And like I said, people are going to do whatever they need to do um, to, 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 to contribute to bring this country yeah. back. Yeah. And, okay, and, but what if, what if somebody's spitting on the ground? You, you mean here? Right. They're taking they're they're walking their dog down the street and he shits on the sidewalk and he just walks away. Is that oh, Paris? Uh, I mean Canadian <laughs> values. You you know what I mean? So yeah. there's not always just the good stuff, but oh, there's yeah. some yeah. bad stuff in China. So and and you look at it in a Canadian way and say, Well, if my dog shit on the ground, well, I'm supposed to pick it up in, in a little plastic bag and stick it in the garbage. But in China no, it's the sweeper's job. But, yeah, but, I mean, uh, so I in, still, in, uh, sorry, go on. Yeah. Uh, so in, in, in areas here, it's getting a little bit better, and they've put boxes all around with uh, free doggy bags that they give out to people. And, um, uh, yeah, I mean, that happens anywhere. I've seen that happen in Canada also, where somebody left their dog shit and walked off. Yeah, and Paris. Say, yeah. yeah. It's okay. in Paris. But, but, uh, but then take it to the next level. Ah, two! You've heard yeah. it but, 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 every, every day. I saw, okay, I saw so. one of the California guys' videos the other day, right? He, he had some sort of about motorway service toilets, right? But then he suggested that that's what they're like all over China. I could take you to the UK to some motorway service toilets. That is equally as disgusting. But it's about... And, and yesterday, I, I was there. We saw um, this little poodle, right? It pissed on the floor. The woman got tissues out and started mopping up the dog piss. Yeah. You know, so it, it doesn't matter where you go. You know, you, you could take... Obviously, um, it, does, it doesn't matter where you are. You could take you are. in California. Just, so that's like the all the on the street. Less, yeah. Yeah understand well, well, so let me tell you something so so the thing you've got to keep in mind and so th these things happen right i've seen and i've mentioned a couple of times uh like you know, like that, for example like i've that. seen yeah i've seen people throw garbage and I, i i i'll like go there and i'll pick it up and i'll put it in the garbage for them to just shame uh -huh. them and there was a, uh, about uh two months ago there was a lady yeah she let her dog shit and left it and i went up to her and i said to her i said look at this i said this city is beautiful They've put these yeah. things here for you in case you didn't bring out your own bag. And I, t I told her and then she said, ha, 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 ha. And then she kept walking. I said, how some, how some, how some, pee. And I, I, I got really angry at her and I said, pick it up. So it does happen. But here's the thing. Yes, yeah. People know about that. There are people out there who are representing the bad of China enough and they're over representing it also. And that's why I feel yes, like I, yeah. I, I do compensate it on the little, the good side. But you got to keep in mind a few things about those two California guys. They were always YouTubers. They've been YouTubers for years. They have saved up yes. tons of footage, and they've got a particular narrative that they want to fill. And they've got hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage that they can comb through to pick out yeah. these instances of bad and represent it as the vast majority of what happens. And they're deliberately doing that. So if I do yes. that, if I go out and say, I just yelled at a lady because she didn't pick up her dog shit, which I've done, all it's going to do is remind people that bad things happen everywhere. And that's already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's already. Well, ex uh, exactly. That, that's what I thought about Daniel's video that really hit home with me is if you're living in a fucking trailer park, you know what I mean? Absolutely. It, yeah. It, you, you're you're going to see trailer park. You see, Daniel, you hit that one perfectly because yeah. you guys yes. were low end turds. Yeah. Living in China. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they didn't live. If they were a... successful here, if they made something of their life here, they would have stayed here. And, Absolutely. you know, exactly. yeah, 
it's it, it, their, what their interpretation of China is layered in a lot of their own personal issues. Uh, and, and, um, and it's amazing that they actually found as good women, Chinese women, as they, oh, they seem lovely. Did. Yeah, they seem lovely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I like both both of them actually got really as I did and probably you did too. Uh, we got lucky. I mean, they have massive YouTube channels now and they got to keep that going somehow. Sure. And I think that they just, you know, once you start playing to a particular market, um, maybe it just kind of keeps getting kind of intensified and they've got to keep going in that direction. Um, I hate. Yeah. I mean, well, it, well, sadly, YouTube has become a very, because of the way that algorithm works and, and they proved it on your channel, Daniel, when you did Curavinus Apocalypse, yeah, it oh, got yeah. way more. And because I never did it again. I never did it again. The algorithm has got yeah. very, very clickbaity. Yeah. Oh, I could have done, I, I, I noticed that. that as well, 150, you know. It's 150,000 yeah. views on that video. And then the next video is I just went to regular titles. Sometimes I do a little bit of sensationalized images. Yeah. But I've never used a clickbait bait title like that again. I don't, I, 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 if, yeah, I just, that's I interesting. Um, I mean, we, we, and, we do to a point because I think that's that that's because of the way if, YouTubers if you want to get your message shame, out. really yeah. yeah if you want to get out yeah. there that's almost the only way you can because if you put yeah. some boring title nobody clicks it you know have any of you guys and, don't and tell me don't sad. tell me any of you guys don't tell me any of you guys have done the similar things as them though and said which provinces uh, have the hottest girls I or something never like never did yeah. the <laughs> so if, if, if you, if, 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 if you yeah. say i did you're a, a, a fucking liar. Uh, <laughs> so, so this is uh, as I re eat. Red, yeah, this is what I'm beer. like. If, if people are going to listen to these guys, um, and and they're going to get coronavirus updates from them, they're going to get like the real China, and and and, and they're seeing these. This is the kind of content they make. It's almost yeah. like talking about these guys and trying to tell their audience that you know uh, you, you might want to kind of second guess listening to these guys. Maybe is a little yeah. bit of a lost cause because these guys are so far gone that they're just feeding these people what they want. No, they have, they'd, be, they, they'd be out of know, China guys, for at yeah. least a year or more. Yeah. Like did you 16, guys see um, the video? Did you guys see the video I did here at my brew pub where I did kind of a talk on them on those two guys? Yeah, yeah, that was a great video. I, I'm yeah. surprised you took that because that was really good, man. Yeah, I, I just keep kind of going back and forth on it, whether it's like um, it kind of cheapens us to, to talk about them too much because they're, they're really, they're just, I feel kind of dirty even mentioning their names. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, well, so I, 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 I took it down, but I did, what onto my main point, I did get a lot of people coming over saying, wow, I found these guys because of the coronavirus updates and I thought something was a little bit off on them, but thank you for making this video. Now I know to be even more careful yeah. with them. So it's not that it wasn't useful, but I just, I don't know which direction to go with on that. I like Alex's idea about showing the positives and focusing yeah, on the I things that, like you said, Leo, about um, showing things that people will notice and say, oh, wow, I had no idea China was like this. You know, when I did my yeah, 4,000 yeah. kilometer road trip that I uploaded, people just couldn't believe the quality of the roads all the way through yeah. China, you know, all the way to, to yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Sichuan province and back. Um, and I think maybe that's the that's the better that's the better way to go. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, do. I keep struggling. We, we, with no, we noticed that on our train video. That one, we, we were really lucky. That was like the third video we uploaded, and it went ballistic. I've no idea why, but so many comments. Wow, I didn't realize I had trains like that in China. You know, look look what we're stuck with in the U.S. Like forty year old systems. We had no idea that they had I, trains I, like I, that. I, in I China, saw you know? that with like uh, Jacoby's journeys and. A number of other places. As soon as they did the high-speed trains, it just fucking went crazy. You know, actually, it's yeah, funny you should say that because my I was active on Twitter for a lot longer than I was on YouTube, and uh -huh. um, one of my uh, most retweeted uh, tweets was about the high-speed train system. And it was I took some clips out from a documentary that mentioned um, how quickly. China built 20,000 kilometers of high-speed rail yeah. and how back in the 60s that basically in the US you had private companies come in and buy up all the transit systems like the streetcars and stuff like that and destroy them just so that they could pave over them to make room for cars because there were car wow. lobbyists that bought them. And it's like you wouldn't be able to do that in China. You wouldn't sure, be able to just, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Happen, yeah. Um, and, and so that connected with a lot of people in the US also um, mm -hmm. where they said, yeah, something's wrong here. You know, it was something like 67% of Americans wanted high-speed rail. 
and it wasn't getting done. And it's like, well, isn't that supposed to be what democracy is? It's supposed to be the majority of people decide what happens. And now they're yeah. starting to see, hold on a second, it actually doesn't happen like that. They're getting it in China, but we can't even get this thing that over 50% of the people want. We can't get it done. And so uh, the high-speed rail uh, was a topic that got one of my most retweets. And it takes me back to my point, again, about, I think, focusing on some of the positives and, and making yeah, people realize, right, wow, yeah. might, that might yeah. actually be the better way to go. Well, yeah. See, I think so. the, the thing is that you're sitting in China right now, and Lee, you're sitting in China right now. After all of this shit hit the fan, do you still feel safe? Absolutely. I didn't know. I, you know, in the beginning, um, I was I was really worried, and um, I w I mean, there was a lot of people who were kind of panicking in the beginning, and they wanted to, they yeah. didn't know what was going on. Um, I, um, I probably if I had everything in order, I might have left for Canada. I might have left for Canada during the uh, early stages. Um, our youngest, uh, uh, ten months old or eleven months, eleven months old. I'm going to get in trouble for not knowing exactly how many months old. Yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, You're a he, terrible he, father. He, yeah, he didn't get his um, uh, Canadian citizenship yet or his Canadian passport, so we might have had a little bit of a problem um, there. I'm sure the consulate still would have helped us. But also, yeah. my father-in-law, um, he is staying with us in Shenzhen, and he has a pre-existing lung condition. He doesn't have a Canadian visa or anything like that. And so I was worried about leaving him and stuff like that. So we're like, sure. okay, we're just. Do, we'll be really careful and we'll stay here. And now it slowly moved to a point that even if I had all of it in order, and even my father-in-law had a visa and everything like that, I wouldn't go to Canada. Would now. you leave? No, would you not, leave? no, not now, no. I, 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 I feel safer here at the moment. Oh, than yeah. than you have most asthma. Other places. Yeah, I, I, have I asthma, do too. Yeah. I do too. I had child. Well, I had childhood asthma, yeah. and um, and my my third son um, has asthma. Um, which was quite interesting. We tried to renew the, uh, you know, the, the ventilator stuff for the mask that uh -huh. you use at home. And uh, there were a few clinics that I reached out to to try to get the, um, yeah. to try to get the medicine. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So that, that's the one we do. We do the mask, uh, the mask uh -huh. one where it, it, it vaporizes it. And uh, all the, the the main clinic we usually go to is closed. And I try to go to a new clinic and try to just buy it without going. And they were asking all kinds of questions, like if you're if you want anything to do with um, breathing medications right now, yeah, even yeah, the private, are you, are you they sick? start questioning you big time. And that I shows see. you how. Oh. Uh, I'm not. That wasn't yeah. for me. For my third. Son, for my third. My my third son has a little bit of asthma, um, and. Uh, it shows you how careful they are. They've got everybody in alert here to find anybody. Because some people might just say, yeah. okay, I'm not going to go. I'm going to stay at home. And, and that's when it sure. gets risky to kind of spread it to everybody, especially if they're going out yeah. and buying their groceries every day. Well, I, but, I but, went yesterday from, from here in Longang to Shenzhen Bay. And yeah. every metro you get on when you change, you have to scan a code inside the carriage. And you know the guard, the security guys they have on, they walk around and make sure you scanned it. They, they watch yep. for people getting on. You scan it, then you, you change at the station. You scan it on the next one. You can't travel on the metro without the um, barcode. You can't buy normal tickets anymore. You have it's the same to for driving. That app. If, you, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you drive into your garden, you have to show the security guard that you've already downloaded that app. And that also, I, uh, that also makes an interesting realization because you would think, because the purpose of this is to actually track where people are going. Absolutely, and, yeah. And, and figure out if, if eventually you are you were exposed to a confirmed patient. They can also let you know. They can also send yes, you a message right, and say, yeah. hey, listen, yesterday at 4 p.m. you were here and you are standing beside somebody who has a confirmed case of coronavirus. Maybe you got to be careful or come in and get checked out. Yeah. And what the interesting thing that makes you realize is most people think that the government here can track you enough where you wouldn't need to do that to begin with. And this that's is actually, right. yeah, 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 that's very interesting. Yeah. And this is actually proving, and there was, there were even some articles where they said that they were asking some of the private companies here to share the data and they were reluctant to share it with the government. Yeah, for this. yeah, yeah, that's so right. Say, Just make your own app and make people download it, which is basically yeah. the same as we have in the West. Like with Facebook, when you download apps and stuff like that and you give it permissions, yeah, they to have to go through yeah. all of the same steps to track us as much as they needed to track us for this. And that, yes, that makes yeah. it an interesting realization also. So. Yeah, but uh -huh. Daniel, you know as well as I do that as a Canadian, they cannot, uh, we, we, we have more alcohol in our system than the virus can handle. So like, we're, pretty well, <laughs> we're, yeah. basi we're, we're basically safe. Yeah. Like, there's nothing that can live in our system except for right. us, right? <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, being, 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 being Easter Canadian, you may be a little bit less susceptible. Oh, come on now. Come on now. No, come on. No, you know, I'm from Saskatchewan and Alex is from Moose Jaw. So, like, we, <laughs> we, we drink like fish. Oh. Ontario, Ontario is always the butt of the, the jokes, you know, like especially that, that year when we had the snowstorm, we had to call the military in. Everybody was ribbing us for that. They're like, ah, oh, yeah. yeah. Eastern, Eastern Canadians so, and Trudeau. All yeah, right. So, yeah, exactly. I think we'll, we'll uh, in terms of the recording, uh, we, we wrap it up at this point, guys. And so for all of our subscribers, yeah. uh, like I said, yeah, give us some feedback. Uh, let us know. Do you want to see the live stream? When do you want to see the live stream? And the kinds of things we want to, uh, you, you, you'd like us to cover, and we'll uh, yeah, maybe, rough, maybe yeah. drop some comments of the sort of subjects you'd like us to approach. Yeah. And the other, and the other one is, is for all my viewers that are watching this. If you're not familiar with that channel there, that channel there, and that channel over there, just hit their subscribe button so that you guys get a full idea of what's going on. And yeah. maybe back over to you, Guelo. You got anything you want to say to everybody before we head out? Absolutely. You <laughs> All right. So from me and the panel and everybody, you guys have a great time and we look forward next time coming to you live uh, on all our channels. As always, take care. Cheers. Take care. Good Don't night. Me to refill. Take care of yourself and have a good time. <laughs>